Hello and welcome. This video consumer guide was created to provide truthful, fact-based information to help consumers understand the water ionizer industry. The video contains a comprehensive review of ionization technology, a detailed explanation of the core machine components, a look at the different types of ionizer companies, and helpful tips and suggestions on how consumers can protect themselves from the bad apples of the industry. Because ionizers are new to the United States market, the technology and terminology associated with them is not familiar to most Americans. Unfortunately, there are individuals in the industry that are taking advantage of this lack of consumer knowledge by manipulating explanations, spinning facts, or providing downright false information in order to sell their lower quality, less effective ionizers. But don't be fooled. A water ionizer is just like any other consumer product. When purchasing any product, you need to use some consumer common sense. Savvy consumers know that in almost every instance, price is indicative of quality. This is a basic consumer fact. A lower priced product is typically lower in price because it is lower in quality. And the opposite is also true. More expensive products do tend to be higher in quality. Consider this, if a consumer were looking for a high quality product, their search would probably not start at a discount store. Now this is not to say that there is anything wrong with discount stores, but most people would agree that this is not where you would normally go for high quality products. That is simple consumer common sense. Today consumers are learning more about ionizers and their popularity is exploding becoming one of the fastest growing consumer health related products in the United States and around the world. Because of this increase in popularity, these products are starting to generate a substantial amount of money for those offering them for sale. When money is involved, consumers must protect themselves from those that would engage in deceptive business practices in order to sell their products. As with any product, there are companies that are leaders in the industry setting the standard for quality and service in it for the long haul while others are simply trying to snatch up as much money as they can get their hands on not worried about how their lower quality products will affect their customers in the future unfortunately many of the water ionizer sellers in the United States run virtual businesses having very little at stake when it comes to the ultimate success of this industry or even the long-term success of their own product. In many cases, consumers do not know with whom they are doing business or even where these predatory sellers are located. Some are employing questionable, even blatantly unethical tactics that dupe consumers into purchasing a low-quality water ionizer that will simply not provide the desired results. We know all of this new information can be confusing and that now you have lots of questions. This video was created to answer those questions and is presented in a straightforward manner so you can better understand water ionization technology. By shedding light on the truth about ionizers, we hope to eliminate the negativity and doubt created by these underhanded marketing tactics, which will allow you to make an educated decision and to buy with confidence. While the main purpose of this consumer guide is to provide facts about water ionization technology, it is also to send a message of warning to consumers that are considering a water ionizer purchase. Buyer beware, be informed, and be empowered. Part 1. The Properties of Ionized Water There are three main properties which make ionized alkaline water different from any other water in the world. Antioxidation, microclustering, and alkalinity. Each of these properties have tremendous benefit, but when they are combined, they create a trifecta of potential. This trinity of benefit is created through the process of ionization using electrolysis. Water, usually normal everyday tap water, enters the water ionizer where it first passes through an internal filter where impurities and chemicals like sediment and chlorine are removed. The filtered water then passes through a series of electrically charged electrodes, also known as plates, 
where a positive and a negative charge physically separates the water ions into two separate streams. One is acidic, the positive water, and one is alkaline, the negative water. These two streams exit the water ionizer from two different hoses. The alkaline water, which is excellent for drinking and cooking, can be collected for immediate consumption or for temporary storage. The acidic water is usually considered wastewater, which is not normally recommended for use, but it can be collected and used for general cleaning purposes. While it is true that the properties of ionized water can be created by virtually any water ionizer, not all alkaline water or water ionizers are created equal. In order to get the greatest level of stability or staying power of these amazing properties, you need a high quality, well manufactured machine. The high quality machines will last you for many years to come, while some of the lower priced discount ionizers may only last less than a year. In order to create long lasting, effective properties, it takes a combination of good source water, sufficient, steady power supply, an adequate number of plates, total plate surface area, and total time the water is in physical contact with the plates. These things are what ultimately determine the stability and the effectiveness of the ionized water. Part 2 Water Ionizer Companies As a consumer, the company you choose to do business with is equally as important as the product you decide to buy. Ultimately, a product is only as good as the company that makes it. In the water ionizer industry, there are several different types of companies. In this section, we will discuss them and explain why doing business with one particular type is more advantageous than with any of the others. There are basically four kinds of water ionizer companies. Full service ionizer manufacturers, private labeling manufacturers, private label sellers, and authorized resellers. There is only one full service ionizer manufacturer operating in the United States, which is a company from Japan called Enagic. The United States corporate headquarters of Enagic is located in a 23,000 square foot facility in Torrance, California. There are regional offices and service centers located in Honolulu, Seattle, Dallas, Chicago, New York, and Orlando. There are also two offices in Canada and one in Monterey, Mexico. There are additional offices located all around the world, including Hong Kong, Australia, France, Italy, Germany, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Korea, and numerous locations in Japan. Being a full service ionizer manufacturer means that the company owns and operates their own manufacturing facility and actually manufactures their own ionizer brand and the service and support are handled directly by company employees. Enagic is using a direct sales model to bring their products to the United States market meaning that they sell directly to consumers. They do this through a group of authorized independent distributors. Unlike distributors of other ionizer brands, Enagic distributors are only used in marketing their products. The order processing and fulfillment, shipping and receiving, and warranty and support are all done by the company, not by an independent distributor. Using this marketing model creates a major advantage for consumers. It allows the company to forgo many of the typical keystoning price markups normally associated with the distribution of products through traditional retail sales channels. This is what allows the highest quality ionizers in the industry to be offered at the lowest possible price. Consumers know that when a company manufactures a product and provides all the support, it means they have made a solid commitment to the product, the industry, and most importantly, to the consumer. Tens of millions of dollars have been invested in research and development, in product tooling and machinery, in facilities and staff, in warranty and support. These are just a few of the things that separate a full service manufacturer from the rest of the companies in the ionizer industry. After the full service manufacturers, there are the private label manufacturers. These are companies that make ionizers for other companies. 
They don't normally build ionizers that reflect their own company name or brand. The main private labeling manufacturer is a company based in Korea called Emco Tech, but they also operate under the name Royal Water. They build about 30 models of ionizers for about 20 different brands. There are slight differences in models based on some features and design, but about 95% of the internal components of these machines are exactly the same. A very important point about the private label brands is that the actual manufacturer does not provide service or support for the ionizers they have made. Service is provided by a company that specializes in sales that typically has no real experience or expertise in ionizer repair and maintenance. In addition to this drawback, in most cases, the private label companies are missing some of the most important ingredients necessary for truly superior and outstanding customer care. Emcotech has no branches or offices in the United States, so there is no way to get local support from the company that actually manufactured the machine. Obviously, this is a huge drawback for consumers buying one of these ionizers. The next group are the private label sellers. These are the companies that purchase the private labeled ionizers from manufacturers like Emcotech. They put their name on them and then claim to be an ionizer company. Jupiter Science is probably the most well-known of the Imcotech private label brands. There are even companies that use the Jupiter models for other business ventures. Ion Ways, a traditional network marketing company offering ionizers for sale, have a sticker with their company name on the front of the machines, but when they talk about the ionizers they sell, they are referring to three models that are actually part of the Jupiter inventory manufactured by Imcotech. Life Ionizers is another example of this type of company. They purchase an inventory of machines which reflect their company name and model number and then sell them to consumers. All they really do is push around products that another company actually created. We even discovered that Life Ionizer had promoted on their website that they were the exclusive manufacturer of the machines they sold. The manufacturer they purchase wholesale product from another company and then sell it. How in the world does this make them a manufacturer? A private label seller, yes, but a manufacturer, no, they are not. This is an image of the screen capture of the Life Ionizer website promoting to consumers that they were the exclusive manufacturer of the machines they sell. This information was exposed in a detailed 13-page special consumer report entitled The Facts of Life. Shortly after the release of this report, the information about being a manufacturer was removed from their website. So why was it removed? And if it were not true, why was it put there in the first place? The only logical conclusion would be it was there to try to trick consumers into believing that Life Ionizers was indeed a manufacturer and not just a private label seller. Unfortunately, most consumers have no idea how these companies operate and they trust the information being presented on the internet. This is why it is so important for consumers to do at least a little bit of research of who they're thinking about doing business with. Buying directly from the manufacturer is a great idea, but consumers need to make sure the company is really what they say they are. An actual manufacturer has invested millions of dollars in their operations, while these private label sellers only spend a small fraction of that on their limited amount of inventory. A private label seller referring to themselves as a manufacturer this is an insult to the real manufacturers that have made the huge financial commitment to actually take their product from concept to creation. The main consumer issue with private label sellers is that they really have very little at risk, with nothing more than a relatively small amount of inventory keeping them active in the industry. This makes it much easier for them to consider leaving the industry altogether should market conditions change or should the operating cost increase, which would make their profits go down. Life Ionizers actually serves as an excellent example of this. Their business, located in Suite I in a small, one-story, multi-tenant industrial park, with most of the offices in the building only being two to 4,000 square feet, 
not having the substantial investment of their own building or their own manufacturing facility at risk makes it much easier for them to consider simply ceasing operations if they chose to do so. Consumers may be very surprised to learn just how little the majority of ionizer sellers actually have invested in their operations. From the looks of their websites, they appear to be million dollar companies. But when the superficial layers of internet fluff are peeled back and the truth is exposed, consumers can finally see the real companies they are considering doing business with. Hopefully, they discover what lies beneath before spending their hard-earned money. The last group of companies are the authorized resellers. These are independent sellers that are authorized to sell and distribute here in the United States on behalf of a main company, most of which are based in Taiwan or Korea. There are quite a few different resellers operating in the United States, and perhaps you've heard of some of them. There is Chanson USA, Tiant USA, Pure Pro, Evantis, KYK, and many, many others. And there is an important fact that applies to all of them. None of these resellers are the actual manufacturers. They are not even official branches of the manufacturing company. They are simply authorized resellers, and support and service will only be available while they remain active in the industry. Of all the different kinds of companies selling ionizers, the resellers probably have the least to lose, since all they really do is buy limited amounts of wholesale inventory to sell at retail prices. Having the least to lose makes resellers the most likely to drop out of the industry, so consumers, beware. These are the main types of water ionizer companies operating in the United States. There are other brands out there, but for the most part, an ionizer company will always fall into one of the four types we've covered. As a consumer, remember that many of the different ionizer brands out there were actually built in the exact same factory and that 95% of the internal components are identical. They just have a different brand name. We really don't want consumers to be taken advantage of or to be misled, and there are some easy ways to keep this from happening. The best way for consumers to protect themselves is to consider the following key points before deciding which company they will allow to earn their business. Number one, the type of company, a manufacturer, private label seller, or reseller. Number two, the length of time in operation. Many years in business creates experience, expertise, and dependability. Number three, number of locations, offices, or service centers offering local support. Number four, honors and certifications, industry recognition, better business bureau ratings, direct selling association membership, water quality association certifications, etc. Number five, check out the company. Research the owners, the staff, and the main associates. Check for lawsuits, consumer complaints, etc. Know with whom you are doing business. Number six, be cautious with virtual internet-based companies. Many times these turn out to be predatory sellers, promising the world but delivering very little once they get your money. Number seven, don't be pressured into a right now buying decision. Take your time and really understand your available options. Number eight, demand your rights as a consumer and get water samples. The proof of the effectiveness of the water produced by an ionizer is in a glass, not in a sales pitch. If a salesperson tells you their water ionizer is the best, then tell them to prove it by putting their money where your mouth is. Tell them to provide you with free samples so you can decide for yourself. If you are seriously considering the purchase of a water ionizer, we recommend that you demand the very best. Based on many years of experience in this industry, we have concluded that the best way to protect the investment in a water ionizer is to deal with an established, full-service manufacturer with an excellent reputation and solid track record, one that will be able to provide support and service for many years to come. Part 3. Ionizer Technology and Terminology 
Unlike many of the water ionizer companies, we are not going to try to dazzle you with a bunch of impressive sounding technological terminology. In fact, we are here to try to simplify things and shed some light on the truth behind the tech. Because this is a new technology to this market, most American consumers are not familiar with ionization terminology. Predatory sellers know this and try to use it to their advantage. They try to complicate things by making them seem more technical and advanced than they actually are or need to be. I believe it's worth mentioning that when it comes to water ionizers, in most cases, the more technical the product is presented, the less it actually has to offer. Flowery sounding terminology is often used to hide the fact that the quality of the product is not very high. Consumers deserve more than impressive sounding terms. They deserve impressive performing products. In this section, we will be covering the five aspects of ionizer technology that are most commonly misrepresented or spun to serve the needs of the seller. The first are the electrodes or plates, which are the engine of a water ionizer. The construction, size, and number of plates are extremely important as all of these directly affect the quality of the ionized water produced by the machine. Water becomes ionized as a result of physical contact with the electrified plates. So the total surface area of the plates, which is created by the size and construction, plays an important role in the ionization process. The plates are typically made of platinum coated titanium, which explains the higher selling price of the better quality ionizers using larger solid plate construction. There are basically three types of plates, solid, slotted, and mesh. Each style may be referred to by a different name and in a different configuration depending on the water ionizer brand. Many of the lower quality ionizers heavily promote and use mesh plate electrodes. Contrary to the hype surrounding mesh plates, the main reason they are used is to reduce manufacturing costs, nothing more. Using mesh plates allows the manufacturer to use much less titanium and much less platinum for each machine which drastically reduces product cost. Unfortunately, it also drastically reduces the product quality and effectiveness. Sellers try to convince consumers that mesh plates are used because they are more effective, not because they are less expensive. They tell consumers that the design of the mesh plates are able to create a greater amount of surface area compared to solid plates. And in theory, a solid metal plate with holes bored in it could create more total surface area than just that of a flat, solid surface. The surface area, created by the insides of the board holes, would increase the overall surface area, which would add up to be greater than that of just a flat surface. However, there is a catch. For this to work, each plate would need to be extremely thick. With these mesh plates, that is simply not the case. The mesh plates in most of these machines are nearly as thin as a piece of paper. The contention that these mesh plates have a greater surface area than solid plates relies on a mathematical principle that simply does not apply. But still, sellers that offer machines with mesh plates continue to try to convince consumers that they are the best choice. The following is actually a quote from a water ionizer seller's website describing mesh plate electrodes. This is where they display their most impressive spin regarding mesh plates. Five of the most advanced mesh platinum titanium electrodes in the world. The electrodes are covered in a super fine mesh with very distinct high points and valleys. End quote. After extensive investigation and exhaustive research, it was discovered that the distinctive high points and valleys were, in fact, nothing more than holes. But what a spin! They took the fact that their plates have holes in them and turned it into an impressive sounding feature, one that would fool even the savviest of consumers. In order to truly understand the role the surface area plays and why the construction of the electrodes is so important, we need to cover some ionizer basics. As we have already mentioned, these machines ionize the water as a result of the water coming into physical contact with the positively and negatively charged plates. Having a greater surface area will allow the water to be in contact with the plates for a longer period of time, thus creating a stronger ionic charge. Here is an example of how the plate construction affects the surface area. Take a look at this picture. At the top, there is a brick wall. 
and a chain link fence. At the bottom, a solid and a mesh plate. If asked which of the first two pictures would have the greatest amount of surface area, meaning the most surface that can be physically touched, most people would agree that it would be the brick wall, since the chain link has very little actual material and is mostly holes. Even if the chain link fence were 10 times bigger than a brick wall, it would still not have a greater physical surface area. That being said, how could the mesh plate with holes pictured on the right have more surface area than the solid plate without holes pictured left? Since the mesh plate is nearly paper thin, it cannot and it does not. Even if the size of the plates were identical, the holes end up depleting the total surface area, making it roughly half that of an equally sized solid plate. This is simple mathematics. However, as you can see by an actual side-by-side -side comparison picture of these plates, they are not the same size. In fact, the mesh plate is actually smaller, which means the solid plate would have an even greater amount of total surface area. Since total surface area is such an important factor in the creation of ionized water, it is vital that consumers consider the dimensions of the plates and their construction, solid, mesh, or slotted. If they are mesh or slotted, consumers need to find out if the reported surface area has been adjusted to reflect the negative space created by the holes or slots. In most cases, it has not been adjusted. There is one ionizer company, Valara, that went from selling ionizers through the internet to becoming a traditional style network marketing company. We only mention Valara because their ionizers use a very odd electrode configuration that seems more like a selling gimmick than a functional feature. It is called direct disc ionization. Since we are talking about both plates and surface area, it seemed the right time to cover this. As you can see, the Valara disc plates at the bottom of the image are much smaller when compared to the plates of another ionizer brand at the top. When we conducted our own independent test of the water produced by the Valara ionizer, the properties were extremely unstable, the flow rate was extremely slow, and the machine kept turning itself off after about 10 minutes of use. Even though their water-cooled power supply is promoted as being able to handle continuous water production. When the Valara machine was taken apart, we discovered that the housing was not waterproof, nor were the electrical connections. And all of the wires were connected using basic twist cap wire connectors, which are not supposed to be used anywhere near water, but were located in the direct proximity of the water flow, creating a potentially serious electrocution hazard. As is often the case in life, it's not what you know that will get you, it's what you don't know. Well, when it comes to Valara, now you know. That's enough about them. Let's get back to discussing the surface area. Here is another example of how plate construction affects total surface area. Assuming the outer dimensions of all three sets of these plates were 3 inches by 5 inches and there were a total of 7 plates, the solid plates would have an approximate total surface area of 105 square inches. The slotted plates would have an approximate total surface area of 79 square inches, and the mesh plates would have a total surface area of approximately 53 square inches. Based on these figures, it would take over 9 slotted plates and 13 mesh plates to even come close to the same total surface area of the 7 solid plates. As you can see, it is important to clarify how the total surface area of the plates in the ionizer you are considering is being calculated. Many of the ionizer companies that use mesh or slotted plates provide a surface area based only on the width and height of their plates, not on the actual physical surface area, which creates an inaccurate reporting and misleads consumers. On a final note regarding electrode plates, some of the lower quality ionizer sellers advertise that consumers can choose between mesh and solid plates when buying their ionizers. However, when consumers request the solid plate construction, they are told that those plates are currently out of stock and are then convinced by the salesperson that mesh will be just as good. Consumers need to be aware of this classic bait and switch tactic. The next aspect of ionizer technology that we will discuss is power supply. The amount of power that surges through the plates of an ionizer is one of the most important aspects of ionization, if not the most important. 
It is the amount of power coupled with the size, construction, and number of plates that will ultimately dictate the strength of the properties and the stability of the ionized water. More power creates more stable, longer lasting, more effective, and beneficial ionized water. Which type of power supply is best in a water ionizer seems to be a main point of debate throughout the industry. But, as you will soon discover, this is just one more example of information being slanted to accommodate the needs of the seller. There are really only two types of power supplies used in water ionizers, transformers and SMPS, which stands for Switched Mode Power Supply. The power supply we recommend is a transformer. This is the type of power supply found in the more robust, higher quality water ionizers. A transformer is an established technology that lasts longer, can handle higher wattage, is much more heat resistant, and is able to run for longer periods of time. Many of the ionizer companies promoting mesh or slotted plates also heavily promote the SMPS. They promote it as the most advanced technology available for electronics, and that even the newest plasma screen televisions use this type of power supply. SMPS does have at least one positive selling point, which is that it incorporates a switching regulator in order to make the conversion of electrical power more efficient. But let's take a deeper look at some of the realities behind this technology, and you will see why this power supply might be great for a plasma television, but is really not a plus when it is used in an ionizer. Unlike a linear power supply, the pass transistor of SMPS switches very quickly between states of full on and full off. This minimizes wasted energy, but also has a major downside when it comes to an ionizer. When you consider that ionization happens as a result of electrical current, that current being off for approximately half the time is not good. In fact, what it means is that if you run an ionizer with SMPS for five minutes, there is no electricity being sent to the electrodes for approximately two and a half of those five minutes. The question becomes, how much of the ionized water produced by those machines is actually ionized if there's no electricity being sent to the plates? There is even an explanation of SMPS on an ionizer seller's website stating that the full on and full off creates an average power output, meaning that an ionizer that says it is 300 watts that uses SMPS would only produce an average of 150 watts of actual power. In either event, water ionized half the time or at half the promoted power output with SMPS, consumers are being duped into believing they are getting something that they are actually not getting. Traditional transformers are the best form of power supply if you're looking for something that can handle ongoing, continuous electrical usage, as well as higher wattage. Ironically, these low-end ionizer companies actually attack the use of transformers, saying that it is outdated technology and that what they have is much more modern, which is supposed to make it better. They act like the transformers used today are the same as those invented by Michael Faraday back in 1831. Contrary to these attacks, the transformers that are used are the most advanced available and one of the key components to the success of these products. It is what allows a higher wattage water ionizer to run for long periods of time while producing the most stable ionized water available. And while many ionizer sellers continue to promote SMPS, sometimes we can find confirmation of the truth in the most unexpected places. We recently discovered a footnote on the website of a company selling Ionways water ionizers regarding research of the SMPS power supply conducted by Emcotech, the private label manufacturer we discussed earlier. The following is the information appearing on this website. A switched mode power supply, also called SMPS, is an electronic power supply unit which differs from the more common linear transformer type power supply. Each type has advantages and disadvantages. For example, while the SMPS power supply is lighter weight and typically less expensive to manufacture, it has been shown to respond more slowly and be less stable overall than the transformer system. One clear advantage of SMPS has nothing to do with its electrical performance, and this is that its lighter weight results in lower shipping costs. 
While some ionizer companies choose to employ SMPS for use in water ionizers, comparative research by Imco Tech in specific ionization applications indicates an overall lack of stability and long-term reliability in the systems currently available. Following are the comparative results of Imcotech's research on SMPS versus transformer power supplies in water ionizers in a residential setting. In the area of stability, transformers were rated high and SMPS was rated average. In the area of noise and ripple, transformers were rated low at 1 to 10 millivolts, which is good while SMPS was rated high at 10 to 100 millivolts, meaning that it creates more noise when operating. In the area of response time, transformers were rated fast at 0.1 to 1 millisecond, and SMPS was rated average at 0.5 to 10 milliseconds. Much has been made in the internet marketing for ionizers using SMPS. One example would be that SMPS can adjust the ionizer's performance to your water quality. Technically, this would require an extremely fast power supply response time. Based on MCO's research, you can see that SMPS simply does not produce. While SMPS is employed in some electronics due to the weight and cost advantage, transformers remain the most prevalent, durable, and most stable power system in home electronics. As we mentioned, sometimes the best supporting evidence comes from the most unexpected places. The next item we will cover is very often presented as a selling feature in many of the low-end water ionizers. Unfortunately for them, we realized that this was actually a flaw. We are talking about the automatic heat shutoff sensor. It is referred to as slightly different names depending on the brand. It may be called an overheat detector or a high temperature overload switch, or a temperature sensor auto shutoff. On one ionizer seller's website, they promoted their ionizers as coming equipped with high temperature overload automatic transthermal temperature sensor shutoff and reset protection. Sounds impressive, right? But no matter what it is called, they all do the same thing, which is completely shut down the flow of electricity to the electrodes if the machine starts to overheat. The bottom line is that this so-called feature is included because the ionizer is prone to overheating, which any reasonable consumer would see as a flaw, not a benefit. Typically, this sensor is programmed to automatically activate after 10 to 15 minutes of use. Many lower quality ionizer models then require a resting period before the ionizer can be used again. Without this sensor, some of the components of these lower quality ionizers could literally melt or even worse, they could combust and actually start to burn. If you consider this in terms of other products you use every day, you will quickly realize that an automatic shutdown of a product after 10 or 15 minutes of using it could create major headaches or even serious issues. Just imagine if your computer simply shut down after 15 minutes of use and then it had to sit for 30 minutes before you could start it back up. Or maybe your refrigerator could only run for 15 minutes, and then it would shut itself off. Or how about your car? What if you were driving down the road on a rainy night, and then, without warning, your car simply dies? And not because there was a problem, but because it was made that way, and you had just driven for longer than 15 minutes. In these examples, is there any way you would keep these products? Of course not. If other products were equipped with this so-called feature, it is suddenly exposed for what it actually is, a major design and mechanical flaw. Obviously, consumers should really think twice about purchasing any ionizer equipped with an automatic heat shutoff sensor. The next aspect of ionizer technology we will discuss is the auto flow control sensor. This is another masterfully spun feature of many of the lower quality ionizers. And once again, in order to truly appreciate the spin, you need to understand some basics about ionization. Remember the main factors of an ionizer that influence the quality of the water? The power, plate size, construction and number, and the length of time the water was in physical contact with the plate? This is when the last piece comes into play. 
The designers of the lower quality ionizers know that they have lower power and much smaller plate surface area, so they devised a way to manipulate the physical flow of the source water to force longer contact with the plates. The auto flow control is nothing more than a regulator that limits the amount of water that can physically pass through the machine at any one time. With an auto flow control sensor, it would not matter how high you were to turn on the faucet because the valve would control the flow once the water actually entered the machine. With the flow reduced, the water pressure is less and the water passes over the plate slower and in less volume. This results in the water having a higher out of the machine pH and negative ORP reading. However, these properties are very unstable and dissipate very quickly. The auto flow control is one of the main reasons that some water ionizers take so long to produce any real amount of ionized water. The flow rate is typically one third to one half that of an ionizer without a flow control sensor. This is just one more poorly designed component that the lower quality ionizer sellers spin in order to make consumers think it is a feature instead of a flaw. Once again, consumers should think twice about purchasing an ionizer with an auto flow control sensor. The final part of the ionizer that we will cover is the internal filtration. In addition to ionizing the water, most ionizers also filter the water. This allows the water to be as pristine as possible before actually entering the electrolysis chamber where it is ionized. A high quality single filter should be able to accomplish this, yet some ionizers have dual filters. This is another great spin because it would seem that in this case two would be better than one. It makes sense until you understand why there are two filters. The reason may surprise you. It is to put stuff into the water, not take it out. To fully appreciate why this is being done, once again you need to understand some of the fundamentals of ionization. The main thing you need to know is that in order to ionize water through electrolysis, there must be minerals present. These act as conductors for the electrical charge. The more minerals in the water, the greater the conductivity. The greater the conductivity, the greater the ionization. Because the makers of many of the lower quality ionizers know that the power surging through their machine is not sufficient to ionize with the limited mineral content found in most tap water, they add additional minerals into the water from the second filter, which helps create a slightly stronger charge. Some of these minerals also have a higher pH level, so when tested with pH drops or other pH testers, the water will appear to have a higher alkaline level. Using additives to boost the pH level defeats the whole purpose of ionizing the water because all it does is give an illusion of the higher alkalinity which is good for the body, which will only result in the illusion of improved health. So when you are considering your water ionizer, look for a machine that is able to effectively filter the water using only one filter and that does not need additives from a second filter in order to make the water appear more alkaline. After reviewing this information, we hope that you feel more confident in being able to see through some of the smoke screens created by some of the ionizer sellers and that you have a better understanding of the core ionization technology. While there are other aspects of ionization technology worth your consideration, these five areas are probably the most vital for consumers to really understand. Now that you are armed with this information, you should be able to make a confident, educated decision when it comes to the water ionizer you will decide to purchase for you and your family. Just always remember that no matter how technical an ionizer sounds or is presented, the ultimate test of its potential is in the water it produces. Simply put, the proof is in the glass. Everything else is just talk. Part 4 internet review websites. In this section we will focus on a topic that probably creates more confusion for consumers than any other information that is available regarding water ionizers. This confusion does not stem from the actual information being covered but from the manner in which it is being presented. You see some of the predatory water ionizer sellers have actually created websites that appear to be independent unbiased reviews of water ionizers. 
Some are very elaborate, having a look and feel similar to that of consumer reports. For the record, there are no independent, unbiased water ionizer review websites on the Internet. Every so-called independent water ionizer consumer review website that you come across is nothing more than a marketing website created with the specific intention of selling a particular brand of ionizer. These sites have not been created to provide information that will help protect consumers. They have been created to influence a buying decision. Consumer Reports, the most respected name in product reviews for consumer protection, has not reviewed water ionizers. This image is a screenshot from the Consumer Reports website where we conducted a search for water ionizers. The results were zero. While this video was produced to provide truthful information, when it comes to information like this, information that is easy enough to verify, don't simply take our word for it. Challenge our findings and check for yourself. Visit the Consumer Reports website and conduct your own search. Just make sure you are actually visiting the official Consumer Reports website and not a water ionizer company marketing website disguised as a consumer review website. There are a few very simple ways to identify a fake review website. The first and most obvious is when a review website lists their top pick or top brand and then it is the machine or brand that is the only ionizer on the website available for sale. A real review website would have all or nothing. Either they provide links for purchasing all of the reviewed products or none of them. A real review website is for providing information. They have no vested interest in which product comes out on top, so they will not pick and choose which products can be purchased. This even applies to the sites that review 10 different water ionizer brands but only have purchase links for five of them. What this indicates is that the owner of the site has a vested interest and is actively selling those particular five brands, which does happen. Another very easy way to spot a phony review website is to check the contact information. Legitimate product review websites provide detailed information on how consumers can contact them. Listing the company or organization name, their address, phone numbers, hours of operations, etc. When you click on the Contact Us link and it directs you to a page that has nothing more than an email link or a short form to submit, you are most likely on a phony review website. These fake sites don't want you contacting them, which is why no real contact information is ever provided. There have been some exceptions to this. Water Ionizer Expert, a site that appears to be an unbiased review website, is actually owned and operated by Earth Trade Water, which is the parent company of Life Ionizers. At the bottom of each page of this website, there is information listing Earth Trade Water as the owner and operator of the website. Consumers are smart enough to know if a website is owned by an ionizer company, any reviews of ionizers that they make will be biased. Covering the features or benefits of their own machines would be one thing, but to try to convince consumers that a competing company in the industry is going to give a completely objective and honest review of other brands, that is just very unlikely. But perhaps we need to step away from the ionizer industry for a moment and think about this purely from the consumer standpoint. Imagine how you would feel if you discovered that an automobile review website promoted as providing reliable, unbiased information that you can trust, a site that many people were visiting to help them make a buying decision, was actually owned and operated by one of the car companies being reviewed. And then, to make matters even worse, the models that received the best reviews on the website were those of the car company that owned the site. As a consumer, would you not be outraged by a company that would stoop to such underhanded tactics in order to try to trick you into purchasing their product? If so, understand that the exact same thing is happening in the ionizer industry right this very second. If you are outraged by this, you should be. As a consumer, you deserve better than to be treated with such disrespect and dishonesty. While not as predominant as the review websites, we do feel it is important to address the so-called laboratory test results that surface online every now and then. Once again, if you run into a document or video on an ionizer-related website that is about comparative product testing, 
These are for marketing purposes. They are not for actual scientific purposes documenting an ionizer's effectiveness. There have been no real laboratory product comparisons. Now, if you wonder what I mean by real, allow me to explain. There have been instances when water samples have been sent to independent labs and they were tested for things like pH value and ORP. The labs then went on to draft a report on their findings, even though they did not even know where the water samples came from. They simply reported based on the information that was sent to them. This does not constitute proper testing. In a video that is on the internet, a very scientific, official-looking man takes viewers through a series of tests that were designed to convince them that one ionizer brand is better than another. The problem is, the testing is not following even the most basic protocols necessary to truly come up with definitive results. To an untrained eye, most of these tests seem legitimate. Consumers need to know that there are no reports or videos depicting laboratory tests that have not been produced solely for the purpose of marketing. You will know if the day comes that real testing is conducted for actual scientific purposes. First, there will be many, many different models tested. There will be at least two of each model used in the test. In scientific testing, this is called redundancy, meaning that the results of each product are proved not to be a fluke because they are actually produced from two different machines. Next, all of the testing conditions will be equal. The source water will be the same. The exiting flow rate from the machines will be the same. On one testing video, they explain how the flow rate of the water is equal because they turn the faucet on to the same pressure during the testing of each machine. Unfortunately, because some machines have the auto flow control valve, where you put the water pressure on the faucet has no bearing on the actual flow rate exiting the machine. The results of those tests are inaccurate. All aspects of testing need to be equal in order to get truly accurate and unbiased results. There is one more point of consideration when it comes to these review websites or the aspect of general consumer protection. While these websites might seem like they were created to help, they were actually only created to sell. And while some of the predatory ionizer salespeople may proclaim that the information they are sharing is to protect your best interest as a consumer, the reality is they are simply trying to sell you their brand of ionizer. Remember, they are not in the business of consumer protection. They are in the business of water ionizer sales. Every word they say is centered around this objective. So, while it might give you a nice, warm feeling to believe that the salesperson on the other end of that email message or that telephone call has your best interest at heart, just don't be so naive to think that they are being so helpful because they really care and truly want to help you. They are appearing so helpful because they are trying to help themselves by selling you one of their products. So, when it comes to ionizer reviews found on the internet, your best bet is to realize that they are not objective and that the sites were created to sell you a specific product. If you really want to test the water being produced by an ionizer, then demand water samples and let the testing begin.